What if we could stop extreme weather events, the expansion of deserts and rising sea levels? Scientists are already devising techniques to intervene in the Earth's natural systems. It's a field known as geoengineering. It's basically a suitable approach. Maybe not the best, but appropriate. We humans have caused global warming through our activities, and so now, through our activities, we can also counteract it. One example of geoengineering, the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide is filtered directly out of the air using a chemical process. The CO2 is then pumped underground, where it can no longer harm the climate. The Swiss company Climeworks are among the pioneers in this field, but as yet they're only able to filter rather modest amounts of carbon dioxide out of the air, 900 tonnes a year, equivalent to the CO2 produced by some 200 cars annually. Potential business partners remain sceptical. It hasn't gotten to the point where people come to us and immediately agree to partner with us. There's lots of discussion and talking. The company is currently developing its technology at an Icelandic power plant. In a pilot project, the captured carbon dioxide is being pumped 1,000 metres below ground. The idea is to store it there permanently. A visionary technology which is now grabbing political attention. So sometimes in the world, small beginnings turns into a monumental scientific transformation for the good of the world. And I believe very strongly that's what's happening here today. Storing one tonne of CO2 underground costs several hundred euros. And Climeworks is still waiting for the really big customers to come along. That could be a supermarket chain that set itself the goal of becoming climate neutral by 2020. They could achieve 90% of their goal by reducing their emissions, and the last 10% by buying negative emissions, by paying us, for example, to pump the remaining 20,000 tons underground. But can this technology really stop climate change in its tracks? The question is to what degree can that be scaled up to really have an impact on the global climate because that's in the end uh, what matters for climate change, right? And I think there I'm very skeptical. I, I'm very skeptical that uh, these technologies for removing CO2 from the atmosphere can be scaled up to a degree where they would really have an impact on the global climate. There are other visions of how we might manipulate the climate. For example, ships that shoot seawater high into the sky, creating clouds that reflect sunlight and counteract global warming. It's also conceivable that particular types of chemicals could be sprayed into the air. Sulfur particles, for example, could bounce back the sun's rays, which could help cool the Earth. In my view, it's too early to utilize methods like these. We don't know if they were used regionally or globally, how they might affect weather extremes and the distribution of rainfall or drought and flooding. CO2 emissions are still rising worldwide. 2016 was a record year, a development that directly contradicts the Paris Climate Agreement. Solutions are called for. The only way we can achieve a long-term stable climate is by uh, no longer emitting uh, CO2, which changes the climate, into the atmosphere. And then to deal with some of the impacts that are, in a sense, already locked in from past emissions, we can consider what other approaches might help us achieve. And uh, maybe in the end it will turn out uh, that they're not viable, that geoengineering technologies are not viable, uh, but perhaps also uh, it might turn out that they can help us. Pacific island nations like Kiribati are already threatened by climate change. Swift action is needed if we are to prevent such places being completely swallowed by the sea in a few decades.